I'm Darius and I'm Sam and welcome to the Oxford Shoe podcast. This podcast is by young people for young people just to talk about the things that we care about. We're here to give you a voice whether that's the voice your creativity, your professionalism or just something that you're doing that you feel needs to be spoken about. And if you want to get in touch and actually get on this podcast you really can. We don't bite. I mean, we promise. And we genuinely, we promise. But the real question here is, are you listening? I mean, are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening? <laughs> Let's just get on into the podcast. Welcome back to the Black Lives Matter mini series. There are some themes within this mini series that may be upsetting to you. If it is triggering to you, themes of racism, bullying, and various other things, please we implore you to listen to another one of our podcasts that will be much more beneficial to you. Thank you, and I we hope you enjoy the Black Lives Matter mini series. Let's get into it right now. The other problem we've got is it's just not a white thing. Um, yeah. Like we're talking about this sort of thing, like oh, there's, yeah. there's a big topic about is the Middle East racist? Because mm. if you can go, if you wind it back a couple of years, maybe maybe a good couple of hundred years back, um, yeah. the way Saudi Arabia and Dubai and the United Arab uh, Arab Emirates have been built on a foundation of slavery. So mm. Arab, Arab people have a complex, which is... And this complex was like during the time of, you know, Islam and the time of the Prophet and before that and before that. Man to me. Yeah, Man to me at the time, you know, one of the one of the first ever Muslim trillionaires that completely, you know, broke yeah. Egypt's Wall Street down and whatnot. Great man. You should learn about that as well. But racism isn't just a white thing. The thing is, yeah. it's, it's a global thing. And yeah. the only yeah. reason why it's a white thing is because it's more like a white mainstream thing because it's the sort of thing... Mm. You're learning history, you're learning schools. Yeah. It's, wow. it's out and about. It, recently, like maybe a month or two ago, about Churchill and his 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 ideas and ideologies about Indian people, uh, yeah. which was already in history books, but because something big happens, something else has to come out from it. But like Arab people, I mean, not all of them. Yeah. The South is built on slavery. I mean, yeah, yeah. They don't look at Asian people, uh, South Asians, East Asians, Africans, Jamaicans. Um, Anyone that's not Arab is classified as the lowest of low, and yeah. they're considered to do the slave work. Um, Arabs back in you know, ancient uh, Egyptian times, they had black people as slaves. Um, they had Asians as slaves. So, like, to be fair, I wouldn't say it's just a white thing, and I don't want to say it's always been white. It's always been white, but the limelight has always been on white because of the whole slavery that happened in America, yeah. and Europe. But slavery always been, devils, aren't there? You know, There's like even, I mean, I yeah. Even within sort of ethnic groups, there are still hierarchy. cultural. Yeah, there's hierarchies. Like, I mean, like with on my family, so I have like Saskia, um, a side of my family who are Central American. So they're not white. They're my mum's got brown skin, and I got the genes of my dad, so I sort of turned out white. Um, <laughs> and even then, just the kind of in Latin America, there is there are so many different races that combine to create. Latin Americans and yeah. there are black people there are Native American people and white people because of colonization so there's yeah. there are different ethnicities that make up who you are as a Latin American and it's within that there is so much racism and it yeah. is the hierarchy of races and if you're at the bottom you're at the bottom and it's always it does just tend to be Native Americans and black people who do end up just being the most oppressed um, yeah and sort of the lighter you are, the more privilege you have. And yeah, it's, it's such a- They had, they had an actual system for that. They had like, I think it was called Metizzo or something. They had like, Mes yeah, they had like that system where they like graded people on how like yeah. superior they were by the color of their skin. Yeah, yeah. We did a documentary on that in India and Pakistan. Yeah. Um, and it, it catch on iPad or YouTube and everything, but yeah. it was a thing that went down that if it was, it was this is this was based on marriage right this is marriage alone so when a man looks for a, a girl they look for three different types of things and one of those criteria was the, sure. the, the complexion of the skin yeah so the lighter you were white basically yeah. you were at the top of the top like there right the darker yeah. you were the darker you were you were considered below beneath dirty that kind of horrible skin. 
in Asia, the same thing happens. I mean, like, I'm from Pakistan. Mm. My parents are from Pakistan. My dad is. My mom is. But you've got this level of yeah. Color. And, like, mm. I've seen that they, they use these chemicals, fair and lovely. Like, that stuff, oh, that yeah. stuff is disgusting. You put that on your skin, it blo- like, my cousin had it, I think. Um, mm. I got blotches of skin, like, it's gone white. And he's got this, this condition now where, like, he's been using mm. it turned all pink and bleach. And it's, and it's a... Again, that's due to like the whole colonization of India and Pakistan yeah. and white yeah. and dark and bad and people like, oh no, the whiter you are, the better you are. And like, it's still even now, like I've had like where they say, oh, my kid's not that good looking. Why? Oh, he's kind of dark, isn't he? It's like, what yeah. the? Why are you my woman? <laughs> like, your baby's cute, man. Baby little girl, don't yeah. push it. I'll back. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't yeah. talk about it doesn't like that. But yeah. it's, it's sick. And I feel level. I was going to ask you, I feel like there's so much casual racism towards Pakistani people. Like, my Arab cousins uh, were called, um, like, Pakistani as an insult. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. yeah that's, they they would have got well offended by that. <laughs> yeah, Arab people don't... Um, on TikTok the other day, um, there was this Arab guy who kind of, like, broadcasted his opinion about... Someone said, oh, you look Pakistani. And he's like, I don't look dirty, I don't look dark and oh. then he quickly realised what he said and then another guy on uh, TikTok turned around and said now here's the problem the Arab people have a complex, I said and then mm. the guy says, no nah, I apologise for what I said he said, it's great you've apologised we get it, but you've said what you really intended yeah. to say and exactly it's, complex. Mm. It's, sad, and it's so sad the education on, on, on Muslim levels right now is you got your religion and then you got the culture. And it's sad to say this, and it's so true. Pakistani Muslims now, the culture overrides the religion. So mm-hmm. everyone automatically assumes that Muslim people is racist and it's just, it's messed up. And it's an Arab complex. Unfortunately, there's nothing they can do about it. it because yeah. Arab people think that they're, they're up there because they're there and they know and they know they got the money. And I mean, I My- worked in the village for like two years and I had like one Arab guy come up to me and click his finger and say, put, put the shoes on my foot. I said to him, buddy, someone like that. And then the same thing that goes with the Chinese, unfortunately, like they, they are very yeah. ignorant in terms of the way that the Arab and Chinese people are pretty like there. I'm surprised they don't get along at the moment in terms of the ignorance that they've got. But this is my personal like opinion and how it's been with them. They're always like, come, 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 come. I, bu- I need to buy this. I need to buy that. Put that in my basket. And then it's like, mate, I'm not your servant. I'm just a sales, you know, sales guy. I'm, I'm selling yeah. you a suit. You know, I'm not your personal butt, but you know, butler. I ain't chives. You know, I ain't no G. You know, don't don't be calling me hey, Abu. Come here, please, and put my basket in my car, please, because I ain't gonna be doing that. And if I am gonna do it, it's a hundred pound a minute. So let's talk <laughs> about, you know, you know what I mean. If a brother's got to hustle, he's gonna hustle. <laughs> you know, but it's 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 a systematic racism, stroke global thing going on. It's it's deeper than just the white thing. I, I mean, a lot of people think like ever since uh, slavery, you know, has gone um, from like being physically more out, you know, when they used to claim people. A lot of people think that it's been eradicated. However, I think it's just been more subtly hidden. And yeah. it's yeah. in, in yeah. words, unless you actually know, uh, if you're a person of color, you can pick it up like on the small things like the idiosyncrasies the nooks and crannies of how it is. And it's yeah. like, if you're not looking for that yellow car, you won't see it. But like, yeah. when I walk into a shop and I'm with my white friends, they won't acknowledge what I've seen that the guy's actually looking at me like two, three, four, five times and then walking around the opposite aisle yeah. following me. They're liking your so, outfit. They're liking your outfit, you boy. <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? It's like, uh, So I yeah, like, like right now, racism is kind of, Although it is out there in some places, like now, I think, although, like I just said, um, the slavery is not out there as much. It's just hidden. In, hidden a, sick, now. in a sick twist, I mean, it's a good thing that Donald Trump became president, right? Because before him, and uh, we had, uh, before him, they had what, Obama, and then uh, before that, they had George Bush, right? George yeah. Bush's time was kind of like a, a, a hidden, uh, like, slave. There wasn't too much going on in racism. It was there. But it wasn't me, like it wasn't there. It wasn't in your face. Uh, Obama came in, racism kind of went. But you still had the occasional less slander the black uh, president because he's Arab. Yeah. Because he's Arab because he was I don't know what side of Arab he was, but on top of that, he's black. Um, and if he was Muslim, struck the back because he had a name. 
Um, and then you had, you know, you, you had, um, I ain't gonna say his name, you had the orange peach come into, you know, power and uh, <laughs> pancake himself, kind of like, it was like, you know, like when you're in your bed, right? And you kind of like, I personally don't do this, but I know quite a few people that eat in their bed and they've got bear crumbs on top of the sheet. And you kind of go woof, and then you see all these crumbs flying out. That's what happened. <laughs> it came in power, and you saw racism coming from the east coast all the way to the west coast, from the north to the south. And it was like bang, bang, bang. And it was like it's cool to be racist. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna try and calm him down a bit. Yeah, you, I want to oh, hear some. Bad. I want. Sorry, this is what I want to take over. I just want. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Davius, relocate someone else to speak who hasn't spoken. It's this fine. I, I will relocate. <laughs> Ricardo, you look like you had something to say. Like, do you have anything to add to all of this amazing conversation? Yeah, no, I mean, I had a few things to say. Everyone's, um, everyone's just on it, you know, everyone's got their opinions. But, uh, I mean, a lot of you already understand that, like, in America especially, slavery is still a thing. You have, you have private prisons in which prisoners are paid absolutely nothing to mm. produce goods and to do jobs which is taking out of the labor market of america mm. um and predominantly the prisoners are black people so you know slavery has moved from one area where it's it's openly being acknowledged to another and essentially the government have put in place or when this was you know when this was transition period yeah. was coming yeah. they put in place systems in which black people couldn't get accommodation with white people you can get the houses of white people you know there was inflow of, of drugs so of course you know crime will manifest in any area no matter what color you are if there is no economic support so yeah. it, it, it you know it, it's it's um it's it's you know it, it doesn't require thinking really to then say yeah. to then say slavery is abolished well it's not you know and a lot yeah. in other places of the world, slavery still very much exists for products that we consume, like chocolate, for cocoa and stuff. Yeah. Um, but capitalism allows you to take a blind eye to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, as far as as far as you were talking about shaking the shaking the um, the crumbs out, yeah, I think there's a big hate culture um, in the world where where everyone likes to hate on stuff, especially on social media everyone's bashing each other you know yeah. and there's 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 a lot of like hate so all of these things create this hate create this friction between between races and between like genders and people which don't need to be there you know and exactly. i like you were saying earlier about unfortunately a white person can get a message across to a white person because they feel less attacked that wouldn't happen at all if it wasn't like kind of this 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 culture of like everyone's feels so attacked all the time people there's so much hate flowing around mm. you know people are you, you know you're bashing people on how to to you know you're not doing this you're not doing that okay we'll yeah. say all right this is your way of living i understand that but have you ever tried doing this you know do you want to yeah. come you want to come chill with me and we'll go to we'll go to an area where you're not so we'll, we'll do something that's outside of your culture outside of your comfort zone and expand your horizon because you know the way i i don't really understand how these people think because it's the way i've been brought up but these people you know like people that are more racist and people who have these biases don't understand how i think necessarily yeah. okay so there's no way we're going to be able to communicate ideas and just yell at each other to create harmony you have to lower yourself or not lower yourself at all that's the wrong word but you have to embrace who they are first to then get the message across. And like, yeah. I, I'm not, I haven't been a massive advocate on social media of all this stuff because every, like, I just feel it's too much like in your face telling people what you have to do instead of like, you know, kind of guiding people in the right direction. I think there's, there's too much hate for it. And for me, I would rather speak to people around me and change the people around me first and then hopefully you know they do that and then the impact will increase you also like, I just, uh, like oh sorry i was just gonna ask the question <laughs> yeah karen i was gonna say like ricardo do you feel like if you were to speak out about like the racism on your social media platform in terms of like you being a model do you feel like that might kind of like mess up your future opportunities with someone that isn't as like minded as you because like that has happened in the past when we've gone for jobs 
Um, I'll tell you a funny story later on. But like, <laughs> is that how you kind of like feel that maybe if you did do something like that, kind of like uh, being selfishly and you know in your right way that you might not turn around and say I might not be geared towards that because it might mess up my like oh, future. True. Yeah, oh, true. because yeah. someone's ignorant and, on the screen. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're all selfish to a degree, you know. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, if someone doesn't want to book me because of my opinions, yeah. like, I always try to stay very true to myself. I don't want to ever like become something I'm not. So if they don't want to book me because they don't like who I am, like I wanted to swear, but you know, screw them. You know, like um, <laughs> you know, like you know, what, what can you yeah. do? Um, I don't want to work with them either because, especially for me, it's that, that you need to be able to connect with like the photographer, the stylist. And everything. Otherwise, it's just gonna be. It won't be fun, and it the, the like the product will be, be rubbish. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, a, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit without like thinking about it, you know. Mm. Um, because of course, some that are especially in like the fashion industry, there's a lot of um, like, reside, like residing racism. I think. Um, yeah. And it needs to be flipped on its head. Yeah. Definitely. Mm. Yeah, no, I agree. Especially, especially with the fashion industry. The fashion industry is questionable. I love them, but you're questionable. Because yeah. um, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's like you look at loads of these fast fashion businesses and then you're like, hmm, how was this made so quickly? And yeah. why did it rip so quickly? Yeah. If it was made in a great way and not made through slave labour. Like, I'm not, mm. I'm not going to call out any company's names because... <laughs> I ain't, I'm, just, I'm not going to do that today, but you know who you are um, because there are so many who are out there doing it. And even if they're not doing it overtly, they're doing it in some way. And on top of that, there are companies that if you've ever seen, you know, those fun bots on Instagram and Facebook where they're like, oh my gosh, yeah, get followers. They're from click farms. Click farms are places where young children sit in a room and literally click like on something and they get paid less than a penny a day. Yeah, that is that is modern day slavery. Well, not even modern day slavery. That is just slavery. <laughs> yeah, I think the fashion and the beauty industry um, are just built on. Um, they they're kind of built on oppression in many ways, um, because especially for for females and particularly black females as well, they're never really represented. Or up until recently, especially in Western media and Western fashion and beauty, there's just been such a a Eurocentric standard of beauty that's completely unattainable anyway. It's not like it's realistic. Um, mm. And I think that just gets shoved down your throat from when you're a child. And that's why I guess we we see so many stories of, of black women who, you know, don't like their hair or, or yeah. bodies or whatever, because, you know, they've never seen themselves represented for the beautiful people that they are. Like they just are. And it's such a, it's such a shame because you know we're we spent so long and, and so much time and money and energy goes into sort of promoting beauty for white women and mm -hmm. white body types and western sort of western women when that's just absolutely not representative of of people in the west that that's not a thing you know we're yeah. we're massively multi-ethnic and we shouldn't just be appealing to one style of human. That's just rubbish. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. And I feel like I've, I've always felt like that. I've always, um, I mean, anytime I look for hair products, skin products, mm. it will be closely followed by for black people because it's mm. like, I don't know if it's going to work for my skin. Like SPF, mm. SPF, as much as I want to protect my skin from the sun, I don't want to look ashy. I don't want to look like Casper the Ghost. I ain't about that life. Because mm. as soon as it does that to you and you walk out and then you'll be out in public and you'll see like a girl you like and you're like, hey, how are you doing? And then she's like, you look like a ghost. Like, step back, boy. And I'm like, I'm like I, ain't, I ain't trying to play these games. I want to look yeah. cute when I'm stepping out of my house. And yeah. like, you have to, you have to, to look for all of these things. Yeah. Wait, and, bruv, did, did, did you cream your elbows? That's the real no, question. No, no, no. Yeah, man. I can, <laughs> I'm actually here. Knuckles, it's a, it's a thing, man. Y'all don't understand. We go, through, we go through cocoa butter by Vaseline, like, on a, like, an average monthly thing, man. I'm thinking, <laughs> I, got a, I got one in my bag right now. I would get up in the gutter, but, you know, why? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
knuckles, dry skins are, are, are mother yeah. people, are funny. It, yeah. It's all dry skins are stress. Like <laughs> the fact that we could go into a whole other podcast just about skin. We're not gonna we're not gonna dive too much into ashy elbows today. <laughs> We're out, we're out. I'm exposing myself like Actually, I was sponsored by Cocoa Butter. <laughs> <laughs> um, Blue Magic Cocoa Butter, if you would like to sponsor this podcast, I will not be mad. Like, I use you every single day. So if, if you want to come through with the coin, like, that'd be great. <laughs> free promo over here. Yeah, I'm exactly. I'm down for favors, two for one on Van some Vaseline. <laughs> I'm good. Cultural in that. <laughs> <laughs> so earlier, um, I was speaking to Ben about the whole concept of education in the UK and how, in many circumstances, it's extremely whitewashed. <laughs> ben, do you want to explain more about that? Um, yeah, because as I'm sure most of you are aware, when doing history in school, basically you you never learn about anything to do with. Um, like black history the only thing you learn is that slavery was a thing um, and it's 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 said it was bad but that isn't that isn't what black history is so, mm. uh, that shouldn't be the only part that's learned about in school mm. um, and then it's been it's been one one issue is it's been very normalized in schools because mm. um, there was there was there was a conversation that I had with someone. Mm. And we were talking, and they said um, people had the option to learn about black history. It was like an extracurricular thing. Um, and while, yes, you can do that, it shouldn't, that shouldn't have to be what you have to do. Mm. You, there should be, there should be an, because it's, white history isn't the only history. It's, mm. yeah, mm. there's, there's, we, we've, I mean, white I mean, there are important things, I'm sure. Like, we've invented the light bulb. And I mean, I guess that's important to learn about. But there's so many more things that need to be taught in school. Mm. Um, I completely agree. I had a, in my English A-level, every single, every single one of the authors was white. Everything was from, we have been learned about this book called My Boy Jack, which was from a colonialist's perspective, um, Kipling. And every yeah. single... In our poetry anthology, every single one of the the poets was white, mm. and it was just my favorite author is Audrey Lord, who is this who was oh, this queen. Love her, yes. Oh, I gave you guys a book on her. She is she is my icon. Okay. I love her so much. She mm. is this black queer woman. She her poetry could have easily been featured in our A level anthology. It's only we we were only taught literature from a white perspective which is actually really harmful extremely yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. we had yeah. we had a similar oh. sorry but no, ben, um, <laughs> no we had a similar we had a similar thing in our like in our in our poetry anthology where it wasn't we we had one there was there was one black author but it would the it was the the poetry was obviously chosen because it was a black author and they felt like they they it was like um they were like they were basically they were they had a token black author yep. in the yeah. mm -hmm. in the book as always which yeah it's well well it, it was good to see some black representation it would be nice to um have poetry by a black author because the poetry is good because there's tons of good poetry out there you don't need to pick a piece of poetry just because it's by a black author about black issues yep. you 100%. can we should we should what well, it's important to learn about black issues through poetry i think um and through literature but also it would be nice to start just bringing in um piece like pieces written and like artwork as well artwork and pieces written by black people that aren't just there because they're about like are they're about black they're about black culture they're there because they're good pieces yeah exactly yeah, Dar yeah. i have a question oh i'll go away <laughs> i was wondering because i don't obviously i never i'm not a person of color so i don't know what it's like but like 
I know what it's like as a as a lesbian to like never see yourself represented ever. What is it like as a black person to literally never see yourself represented in te- like properly in TV, books, like mm. in school and the curriculum? Mm. Ooh, okay. So this right here could be a whole nother episode. So we're not gonna go in too deep because it's a lot. But um mm. The first time I saw myself represented on TV was Sir Trevor MacDonald. I think I was about six. Um, And then the next time I saw myself represented accurately in TV or film was Black Panther. Now, bear in mind how distant those two things are before I saw myself represented like properly in a way that's like oh my goodness yes we are heroes yes we can save the day no we're not just your sidekick best friend like we are so much more than that and we always will be um so it's like yeah it's always been a struggle um I've always had conversations with my parents about like why aren't we on tv um and I remember my parents always would tell me when they were younger that I mean I'm 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 just going to do the accent because it's so much easier to do so. But um, like in my dad's house, he would be upstairs. His brothers and sisters would be in other rooms, and there would be a black man on TV. And my granddad, when he was alive, like he's not anymore, but he would shout out, "Everybody come! There's a black man on TV oh. now!" It, genuinely, that. Is it, it, this is still something I do to this day with my parents. If there's like a black person on TV, literally I'm there just like, oh my gosh, there's a black person. Like everyone, stop what you're doing. We're watching. If, you know, a TV show focuses on a black family. Okay, let's be real. It's not even if it's a black family. If it's just like a family of colour, me and my family will all stop what we're doing and watch. We're just like, yep, yeah, we're interested. We're, we're intrigued because that doesn't get shown often. And yeah. the fact that, I mean, education is another stress. Fun fact for you all, talking about the light bulb, uh, there was a black man involved in the creation of the light bulb. His name is Lewis Howard Latimer. So without him, the full patent for it would not have been created. And also, we all love our mobile phones. But before the mobile phone was the telephone, Lewis Howard Latimer was fairly responsible for that as well. And these are things we just never get taught about in history or in school or anything. So it's kind of mad that it's like all of these adventures adventures exist. And it's like, so why have I never been told about this? I myself have to take my time out of my own day to educate myself. And could you imagine for a second, and this could get controversial, we may get some comments, but I must say this. Could you imagine if the government said that World War I and World War II were optional for students? They were extra, it was extracurricular for students yeah. to learn about. Like, that is absolute madness. So the fact that you could say yeah. that about any other, like, people group's history, it's like, yeah. what are you doing? That's not, that's not even close to being yeah. okay. Yeah. And people still argue. Like, I've still, I mean, Twitter, just don't do it. Just honestly, it kills <laughs> Like, I've still seen on Twitter people who are, you know, because we've, we've seen so many amazing petitions saying, right, we need education reforms now. We need to learn about this. Um, and there are still people saying, you know what, this isn't relevant now because 85% of, of people in the UK are white. But th- that's absolutely rubbish. Like, we, mm. we need to acknowledge the 15 more percent of yeah. people who are not white in the UK and who deserve to be represented and seen and learn about because we history isn't just right let's learn the history of the major ruling ethnicity in a country no that's not what history should be it's we should diversify it we need to learn about you know different continents different historical figures that aren't just white yeah. and you know the way we like you were saying Darius about the light bulb yeah. we just whitewash everything we right. so discoveries we learn about all these white inventors and these white major figureheads in in mm. history but where are all the where i mean we know black black inventors existed we know that people of color were still doing their thing inventing creating and moving society forward but we don't learn about it yeah. and it's you know it's almost like we act like they didn't exist but they did and yeah. and it's amazing when you learn about it and when you see how many you know particularly women of color who were just kind of sidelined and and put brushed off and said no okay we're going to give all the credit to a white man because yep. they're more palatable they're you know they 
they deserve all the respect. But one hundred percent. We need to learn That's... about about all the names behind these these Every things. Every single one. Well, now. It's like yeah. in the year um eight hundred and fifty nine. There was one of the first young like princesses named Fatima Al um, Bahiri. She she's the one that first ever had a degree. But no one's gonna know about that because, like it says, education just seems to be like it's a bit like what you just said there as well. Uh, whitewashed. Everything just seems to be. <laughs> Yeah. Or white, you know. Celebrate white male. <laughs> yeah, like it's like inventions like coffee, university sur- surgery was found about in the year one thousand, and that was by by an Arab man. Uh, same with like the, the flying, you know, like um, you ever see that movie about with I think it was with Leonardo DiCaprio and a few other someone else about the first ever flying machine being invented. Uh, you know, and the American yeah. said it was, you know, I don't know who who was the first. Well, person? One it's Arabic really badly and. Sorry, say that again. The one in which Leonardo DiCaprio speaks really bad Arabic. <laughs> it's the one, is it him in a movie where they build their own first ever airplane or something like that? Hmm. Yeah, no, it's the first, I don't, can't remember the movie, but like it was actually in the ninth century Spain when the first ever flying invention was created. Um, it was way before uh, Da Vinci drew his plans. That's so cool. it's crazy, like. But obviously that happened because when the crusade came and people went over to other countries, they kind of saw the invention, mm. back with themselves, created their own thing, but then they added their own spin to it. But yeah, no, it's crazy. It's just, it's without, like I said, the most important thing, providing education, you want to Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's and probably. like, it's so, so powerful because like when people are not educated and education spans more than just what you learn in school, it spans what you learn at home, it spans what you learn in, out in the world in society so it's like when no one's educated it's we're we're left in a really like detrimental place and ricardo something you said earlier about you know you you don't like publicly post it on social media but you have conversations with people that's completely fine because you're still doing the work you're still doing something whereas there are many people who just do nothing they are silent and completely complicit they won't start those difficult conversations at home or with friends or with family or anything so the fact that you are still having those conversations is great and to anyone listening who I guess sometimes feels like you aren't doing enough it's okay as long as you're doing something if you're educating yourself if you're taking out the time to at least do something even if it's just listening to this podcast which is absolutely amazing may I say so myself but like these are great things to do because they will help you to you know check your own biases realize oh wait i do have privilege in certain areas and then when you're watching the news various different things you'll be like oh wait so this is what they were referring to about how different people groups are portrayed differently in the media